Okay, everybody, this is it. We made it. This is the last video where we just kind of go through a rundown of a typical day. And I've kind of taken some footage here and there from a couple different days so that I could show you. All right, so let's go down the list. Number one is math, obviously. And I talked about that in the last video, why math is so important to do first. So if you're watching this and you haven't watched all the other videos, I highly recommend that you watch them. So we do math first. Obviously, we're getting the hardest thing out of the way. Two hours for math. It uses one side of your brain, totally different from the rest of the day. So you want to get them at their best. So that's in the morning. So two hours of math, either Saxon math or for the little kids, learning their math facts. And the little kids don't spend two hours learning their math facts. I probably work with them probably 30 minutes. I think that's a good rule of thumb, 30 minutes working on math facts. Older kids, two hours. And again, maybe it's not Saxon lessons the whole two hours, at least a minimum of one lesson a day. But if they've already completed the lesson and they still have about 35 minutes to go, they can work on their math facts. That's how we do it here at our house, the older kids. Or they can go on and do another lesson. All right, so when math is done and they have corrected themselves and fixed their errors and come to the realization that they either have to do the lesson again tomorrow or they're ready to move on to the next lesson tomorrow, math is done. Now we go to writing. They will write an essay. Older kids will write an essay front and back, double spaced at least. If they wanna write more, let them write more. Um, if that's all they can write is just one page and that's fine. If they have no sense of, if they have no source of inspiration for the day and they really can't think of what to write about, then copy work is fine. Pick great books, the book of knowledge, the Bible, whatever it is, something great for them to copy. Typically it's one hour for writing. After they completed that essay, they will give it to you and you will then correct it. You will give them feedback. Try to give them good feedback as well as the uh, negative feedback, the corrections, hand it back to them and they can just fix their errors or if you prefer for them to rewrite the whole thing. I talked about that in my video, the pros and cons with both methods, but I do require that they either fix their errors or rewrite it that same day. The next day always starts with a brand new fresh essay. After that, the way to do it is I have them go over their vocabulary words that they're working on and also look at the Professor K spelling word family on the board because I will test them on it a little bit later. So they do that. They might also do one of the vocabulary exercise sheets that I talked about in the vocabulary video. So maybe just one of those and also working on their pen time writing book. So this all typically could take anywhere from 15 to 30, 35 minutes. If they got done writing their essay pretty quickly, then this is certainly enough and counts to fill up that hour of writing. Okay, so then after that, I give a quick test on the Professor K word families. Now also at this point, if there's a child that needs a little bit of review when it comes to reading, this is when I would, when I would do another lesson of alpha phonics before they start reading their book. That's when I will kind of go through a page or two of alpha phonics just to make sure that they're really firm on it all. And last but not least is the reading. We typically do it after lunchtime. In the morning, we're pretty covered with math and writing and the vocabulary, grammar, spelling, things like that. That takes us pretty much until lunchtime. So then after lunch, they might play outside for a little bit, you know, get that energy out. And then most families that have, especially younger children around this time after lunch, have a quiet time or a nap time. This is a great time for your kids to do their two hours of reading. And that's it. You can talk about it with them afterwards, ask them what they read, then they're free to work on their other interests or read other different books, work on a project, maybe some knitting, maybe a craft like knitting or some board games or just reading other kind of books. The rest of the afternoon is theirs. Now, what does a typical day look like for the younger children, the ones that I'm actively uh, helping get ready for 5-4, helping them read, learning how to read. What does that look like? Well, I take turns and sometimes I start with youngest to oldest or oldest to youngest. Just depends how I switch it up that day. But what I first do is uh, we work on our math facts, about 30 minutes working on math facts. And then 
we work on learning how to read. We go through the Abeka handbook, maybe through some of those alphabet -y fun books, maybe alpha phonics, again, whatever you wanna use to teach a child how to read, we do that. I always try to make sure that they read a little something to me, even if they haven't finished their reading program, whatever they can. And then I end it with giving them a writing assignment. They do their pen time writing books. Sometimes I might have a separate assignment that I might have for them, something that I want them to copy, something that I want them to learn, like my phone number, our address, their birthday, things like that. Just writing it on a piece of paper and giving it to them for them to copy. Or again, we really like those pen time writing books. They'll do that. I also talked about in the preschool video that I made on my channel, some of the Rod and Staff little preschool books that I liked also just to help with the cutting and the tracing and coloring, just things to keep the um, five and under crowd occupied. And that's it. I just take turns doing that with the smaller children. And then usually by that time and switching some laundry around and getting a couple and cleaning a couple things, it's lunchtime. The mornings go by really fast here and I always try to make sure that I'm reading books to the younger children um, after lunchtime when they're kind of settling down for quiet time I want to read them a couple fun young kids books because I obviously read aloud a lot of books for older children gearing it towards my three older children but I want to make sure that I'm covering those younger stories for my younger children as well if you have a child that's struggling with reading one of the best things that you can do is just read aloud to them and I know you're thinking how is that gonna help but it does there's a book called reading magic if you want to read more about that but just reading to them and also them seeing you read so you also sit on the couch and grab a book and letting them see letting them seeing you read will also help in making them better readers. All right, so you did it. You made it through, hopefully, the whole entire Robinson curriculum course. I really hope that this course was helpful to you and that it answered some questions you may have had, but also just to encourage you that this does work and how truly simple it is and how effective it is if you just stick to the basics and in general how it's just a really wonderful way to homeschool. There is, I believe it's called a 60 second zero frustration policy. If at any time you're frustrated and a minute goes by and you haven't figured it out, you're still frustrated, then pick up the phone and call the RC support number. A real person will answer the phone and help you out. And I think that's just one of the really amazing things about this curriculum. Imagine all the love and care and dedication that went into building this curriculum into the selection into just all the work everything done for you i really can't say enough great things about it if you know my personal story backstory with the robinson curriculum you know where i'm coming from it was really there for me during a really stressful time in my life even though i am so 100 percent homeschooling i even had my moments of thinking of sending my kids to public school when i was going through some health issues and really overwhelmed and RC was really there for me. And this curriculum really saved the homeschooling day. They're not at your homeschool conventions yet, maybe one day, but they're not right now. So I really just wanna get the word out there because I think this is exactly what a lot of parents are looking for and they don't even know it yet. Really, I don't know where I would be without the Robinson curriculum. Obviously, I'd be probably doing something else, however, it just brings me so much joy. I don't know how I would be doing something else because this truly makes me joyful. I honestly wake up in the mornings looking forward to the day because there's not a lot of stress, not a lot of pressure on me. I know the kids are gonna do fine. I know if I was sick, like I was recently, um, that they can do school themselves. They don't have to wait on or depend on mom. And I can do flashcards with a child from the couch, you know, if I'm not feeling well and just teaching them how to read. I'm not breaking out this whole uh, program or anything like that. So it just helps me to be very joyful during the day and enjoy our homeschooling routine. I don't know if I don't know if I'd be like that with other things. I know I've tried other things and I wasn't. So that's been my experience. I hope it will be the same for you. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, of course, you can always call the Robinson curriculum directly themselves. Or if you just want to hear from another mom, you just want to ask um, somebody else, you want to ask me, email me at 
at ourhousehomeschooling.com. Check out my websites. There's a lot of information there and also my YouTube channel, lots of Robinson curriculum videos. And so I will link all that information in the description to the video and in the uh, handout. Thank you so much for watching this course. I really appreciate it. I've been wanting to do something like this for a long time and now it's finally done. I'm excited about it. I hope it was helpful to you. I really hope it was. Give it a thumbs up if it was. And again, just thank you for watching and have a great time with this curriculum. I know I have and I just hope the same for you. Bye.